My name is Jason Vong and I've been using the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max for over a month now. So it's time for me to really put it to the test to see if it's good enough to replace my big professional camera for both photography and filmmaking. We will be taking our gear to Italy to capture some of its beautiful cities, the perfect architecture. And afterwards, we'll head to the mountainous landscapes in the Dolomites where we'll try to get an epic photo. That is so worth it. For our next iPhone wallpaper. But let's get some sunset shots first. The big thing is, I want to see how good the dynamic range is when we shoot in Apple Pro Raw. This gives us access to a slew of data within the photo file that allows to manipulate the colors of the photos better. And with a whole whopping 48 megapixels on the main sensor of the iPhone camera, we should be able to get something good. Okay, hmm, problem. The 24mm 1X camera might be a little too wide for the floor and skyline. We're actually getting better compositions with the 48mm 2X and the 77mm 3X lenses. The thing is, the 2X still uses the main sensor, just cropped in. We're coming down from 48 megapixels to 24 megapixels, which is still plenty of megapixels to edit with and do some extra cropping to become my first Italy iPhone wallpaper. I like it, it's kind of minimal. Man, with results this good, I can't wait to see what we can get in the Dolomites. Now, I will say, as we get closer to blue hour, which is when the sun has largely disappeared in the distance, but still some of its light are coming through, the iPhone does quickly fall apart. It's not dark enough for the iPhone to trigger its night mode yet. So we're getting this nasty, muddy look, still loads better than the previous iPhone, mind you, but not the clarity that we would get from a bigger sensor camera, obviously. Whereas with my dedicated camera, I can dial in manually my exposure time and get this incredible result. But let's do some proper nighttime photography and see what's up. Oh, that's actually a really nice shot. Wow. There's just something about Venice lights and water that just makes every photo look like a painting. Now, what I figured out is you can actually trigger night mode if your iPhone is not already doing it. Simply tap on the arrow and select the moon icon and slide over to the one second exposure. That should help allow in a bit more light for cleaner night photos. I'm impressed. As long as you're taking the photo with the main sensor, there are a ton of dynamic range you can pull from to make the photo look better in the edit. In comparison, editing the 0.5 RAWs were quickly hitting the limit when we try to push the colors. Also, yeah, the flaring is reduced, but it's still apparent. And we can't quite get the long exposure light streak effects on the iPhone unless we turn on live photo, but then we would lose out the ability to capture it in RAW. So there are still some limitations when it comes to doing night photography with the iPhone. But if you enjoy the process of editing your photos, then you'll get some very decent low light results. So right now we're going to the Leaning Tower of Pisa to do some touristy things. I think a bus is here, so I'm good. Yeah. Most smartphone users are really just using the cameras to capture quick memories, but we're gonna try out the iPhone as a proper seven lens camera in a variety of situations to see the different looks we can get. It doesn't look real. It's more leany than I thought. Are there people up there? Yeah. Now we're going by Apple marketing. Maybe we should count the front camera as the eighth lens, but I still think there needs to be a wider front camera option for video. Not permanently wider. Maybe they can do something similar like the main sensor camera, just crop 1X, 2X kind of deal. Or perhaps a screen integrated on the back here so we can use the better sensor cameras. Now Sony actually made something like that for their Xperia phones called a vlog monitor, which is actually really neat. So uh, perhaps Apple can make a uh, MagSafe monitor? Hmm. We'll have to get creative with this. Can't do what everyone else is doing. Can I kick it? Oh, let's try something else. There we go. While our photos aren't gonna win us any awards or any Instagram brownie points, it's always great that the iPhone can balance bright highlights and dark shadows, making our photos and videos look very even, thanks to its computational photography. And uh, speaking of computational photography, for portrait mode, it allows you to select the blur later, how much blur you want, and where you want the focus to be, which is really neat. But you cannot shoot portrait mode in RAW, which is a darn shame. Now, the issue with the 20 and the 35 millimeter lens is, I keep forgetting about them. They're hidden away, tucked behind this 1X right here. 
Of course, you have the choice to make the 20 and the 35 millimeter your default focal length whenever you pull up the camera app. But since I'm more of a 24 millimeter kind of guy, I kept it as is. Let's see how pro the iPhone 15 Pro Max is. Oh, I'm just loving the variety of lenses. Combined with the upgraded sensors, not only does it make getting different shot coverage so much easier, but I can be discreet and uninvasive. Big camera setups like this tend to make people in public a bit uncomfortable regardless if you have good intentions. And even some establishments do not allow professional cameras in. So the fact that we can get pro-like footage off of something that is allowed in most areas changes the game. Oh. I can see why a lot of video creators are going nuts about ProRes RAW. It just looks too darn good. And in order for us to film in 4K 60p ProRes log, we need to use an external hard drive and a cable with a fast enough read and write speed. This setup here is inspired by my friend iPhoneDo. I'll have a link down below to the build. But it's kind of a double-edged sword situation right here. On one end, it separates the files for me already so it's not mixed with my personal album and tearing through my internal storage and my iCloud space. On the other, it slightly bulks up the setup. Not massively inconvenient in any way, and honestly, it's well worth the trade-off for mobile ProRes RAW videos. Just uh, make sure to underexpose by negative 0.7 and have the option for locking the white balance turned on for the best results. Wow. Let's get the gimbal out. So we got the Sony ZV-E1 with the 14G Master F1.8 on the DJI RS3 Mini. And over here, we got the iPhone 15 Pro Max with the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. Very comparable in focal length, and already the iPhone setup is so much easier to handle than the Sony. I think I'm gonna enjoy using this one more just because it's lighter and it's pocketable. While I don't love lugging a medium-sized gimbal around all day long, gimbals for me is still integral to our production simply because I love my cinematic push in shots. Does it improve my storytelling? Probably not. Maybe I just like my back to suffer. Now I prefer my gimbal shots to be with a wide angle lens, so I am bummed that the 13mm.5 lens on the iPhone doesn't share that same nicer sensor on the main camera. So in lesser light conditions, it will fall apart. And of course, we got action mode. It still has to be 2.8K and it doesn't do well in low light, but... Wow! Looks pretty good! Man, that's just impressive. Today, we're embarking on our road trip to the Dolomites. So far, the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max have been performing spectacularly. I feel good with what we have so far, and I can't wait to see what we can get in the wild. And ultimately answer the question, can one of these replace my cameras? Let's go and find out. So far. I had to make it believable. We are headed to Cecido right now. Well, we'll try to capture an iconic shot of the mountains, and then we'll try getting some drone footage with the iPhone. How are we gonna do that? Well, you're gonna have to find out later. But for now... Why, yes, that is the new Rode Wireless Pros connected to the iPhone 15's USB-C port. And it works great with the default camera app. Take a quick listen. So we're up here in Cecita right now. It is high noon. We're having a lot of harsh lighting at the peak right now. When you take the photo as a regular JPEG, it actually looks pretty good, very saturated landscape. But when you're trying to process the raw, we have a lot of mixed lighting conditions. In fact, it's a good time to show what the iPhone 48 megapixel sensor is capable of when you have ample lighting. It is damn comparable to my Sony A1s despite the few megapixel differences. The details in the ridges, the buildings in the distance, down to the subtle rock formation. Oh, it's a darn shame the 48 megapixel sensor doesn't get shared with the other lenses. With my Sony A1, I'm getting all of my 51 megapixels with any of the lenses that I use. So there's still an advantage using an interchangeable lens camera system. That's something that's hard to give up. I'm getting a little nervous. But where these cameras don't have an advantage in is being able to paraglide with you. Time to become my own human drone. 
even without using action mode, the iPhone in 4K still gives us incredibly smooth and stable footage. Now, because I need to have a harness on my phone, I couldn't securely attach the SSD for 4K 60p ProRes RAW. I am having the film in 4K 30p ProRes for this flight, and unfortunately, with whatever internal storage I have left, I only have 5 minutes of recording time for a 40 minute flight. Gotta make every click count. And that's the thing about ProRes RAW files, they are massive. And that's because it's defaulted to ProRes 422HQ. Hopefully in the future, Apple will allow us to select H.265 as an option to save space while retaining a lot of that workable log data. However, you can shoot in smaller ProRes formats now with the Blackmagic Camera app if you're willing to download and use a third-party app. It's free and you can film 4K 60p internally on your phone with the H.265 codec, which the filmmaking community have been going absolutely crazy for at this moment. But for now, I want to see how far we can push the limit with the iPhone as Apple intended. And yep, it looks pretty damn good. And now it's time for us to grab our final shot. Sunset at San Giovanni Church in Val de Funes. I just love the minimalism here. We got the church right in the middle of the field. We got the mountains and a gorgeous sunset coming through. Let's see what it looks like on the iPhone. Okay, so the issue is I think 1x 24 millimeter is a little too wide. The better composition here is looking like 50, but we still have some of the fencing and the ribbon right here. 70 would be a lot better, but then we're not taking advantage of the main sensor. Quite the conundrum. But let's see what we can get anyways. So there's lots of trees in the distance right now along the ridges. There's gonna be a lot of details in this photos, but it's gonna be very interesting to see how the iPhone handles the stuff in the shadows. Well, I think we got it. Let's go back to the editing room. And well, bam, would you look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Just look at the colors. Look at that glow. Zooming in, we can still see a lot of details in the distance. And guess what? I have to use a 77 millimeter 3X lens on this. The framing just looks the best compared to the rest. And I'm stunned. All the best photos that we've taken during our time here in Italy weren't even from the 1x 24 millimeter lens. It's been the 2x, the 3x, and even the 5x from the Pro Max. So 48 megapixels isn't everything. We did it. Not even here yet. We did it. So after a month of using the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max and pushing them to their absolute limit, can one of these replace my cameras? Honestly, yeah. If I lost all of my camera gear today, and this is all that I have left, I am confident that I can produce a kick-ass photography travel video series with the iPhone 15 Pros, like the one you just watched. I used to despise mobile video quality and would not take it seriously for any production work. But within the last few years, smartphones are just closing that gap rapidly on cameras, and with the introduction of ProRes RAW on the iPhones, we're hitting that point now of, I can't even tell anymore. The video quality is amazing. The workflow is so much better with the USB-C. The stabilization is just bonkers. And in great lighting conditions, all the lenses here can produce stunning photographic results. The future of photography and filmmaking with smartphones are only gonna get better from here on out. And I can't wait to see what else is out there. Thank you so much for watching. Stick around for a quick word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to create beautiful websites. You don't need any coding knowledge whatsoever. Simply just choose from their many easy to use templates. Perfect for people like us who want to focus on our travels and make YouTube videos for you guys, but still want a presentable website for brands that are looking to work with us. Whether you're building your own photography portfolio, an e-commerce store, or even a landing page for your business, design it with Squarespace. Get a 14-day trial with my link below and try it for yourself. When you're ready to launch, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with my code, Jason Vaughn. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you guys in our next video. Peace. It's gorgeous. It's just like Switzerland. It is.
Should we make out? 